Albedo is probably patch 1.2's biggest surprise after Rosaria's ties and I have been nothing but happy with his performance and playstyle since pulling him. Additionally, his banner has 3 of the best support characters in the game right now, making it one of the most worthwhile banners we have ever had. In this guide, I will go over Albedo's kit and how to use it efficiently. I will also explain the different stat priorities you should be focusing on his gear and go over his best weapon choices as well as artifact sets. Lastly, I will give a few gameplay and team comp tips for Albedo. Albedo's support potential comes from his elemental skill, Solar Isatoma, which will allow him to cast a flower on the ground, which is an action that can be held to place it wherever you want. This will do significant damage to enemies and then will proc Transcend Blossoms, which will deal additional geo damage when you attack monsters in the radius of the flower. This can happen every 2 seconds and can hit multiple monsters at a time. This ability lasts for 30 seconds but has 4 seconds of cooldown so it is easy to relocate it. This ability will also do 25% more damage when enemies are below 50% HP. His elemental burst or ult does a high amount of damage in an area in front of him. If you use it inside the Isotoma's radius, it will cause 7 extra explosions for more damage. It has an energy cost of 40 and a cooldown of 12 seconds, which makes it very spammable for a lot of extra AoE damage and crystallized reactions. Additionally, one of his passive talents makes it so Albedo's boost your party's elemental mastery by 125 for 10 seconds after casting his ult, which is a huge damage buff for your party. On top of that, his passive talent for crafting can also save you hundreds of resin in value. My Albedo is at C0 and functions perfectly well, but it is important to note that he gets a huge power spike if you manage to get C2 on him, because it is most likely his best constellation. His first constellation will cause the transient blossom generated by his skill to generate 1.2 energy for Albedo every time. This will make the ult even easier to charge up and be usable on cooldown. The second constellation provides a buff to Albedo when generating Transcend Blossoms that can stack up to 4 times. This buff will increase his damage by 30% of his defense stat per stack as well as increase the damage dealt by the ult based on the amount of stacks consumed. This is not only a huge damage boost but also makes defense the most important stat to put everywhere on Albedo when this constellation is unlocked. The fourth constellation will increase plunging attack damage by 30% when within the skill's radius, something that might be very good for a character such as Xiao. His sixth constellation increases your active character's damage by 17% if standing inside of his skill radius while having a crystallized shield around you. This is a very powerful buff that would be amazing if it did not cost $2,000 to achieve. As far as his stats priority go, it will depend on if you want to focus more on the damage of your skill and the passive or on the burst damage. Personally, I use defense percentage on the sands. Attack percentage is okay but slightly inferior overall. On the goblet, I use geo damage which is the best by far. And on the circlet, I use crit damage or defense percentage can also be very good here. As far as substats are concerned, Crit rate, crit damage, and defense percentage are the best stats that you will want in every situation. The extra damage triggered by his skill scales off of defense, and it is his most consistent source of damage as a support, so defense is indeed a very good stat on him, but it does not boost the initial damage of the skill, nor does it boost the damage of his ult. For that reason, I have found that crit damage, which boosts the damage of all of his abilities, can provide more benefit than defense percentage on the circlet at times, especially if you are someone who uses his ult on cooldown and manage to hit more than one enemy with it, but this will heavily depend on how many monsters you are able to hit and they are both still very close in value, so either or is going to be perfectly fine. Of course, if you have C2, defense percentage becomes much better than crit damage in that situation. It is also good to note that if you have very good substats on your gear and can achieve a high level of crit rate and crit damage ratio, crit damage will then gain a slightly more value than defense in certain situations. As far as weapons are concerned on Albedo, the refinement level 5 Harbinger of Dawn has proven to be one of the most valuable options in my case. 
It provides a lot of crit damage, which is an amazing stat for Albedo since it affects all of his abilities, as well as provide him with 28% crit rate as long as he stays above 90% HP, which is not too hard to do once you start getting used to how shield and crystallize works as well as using a decent healer. The only downfall of this weapon is that it is a 3 star which has much lower base attack, but base attack does not affect his passive isotoma damage at all because it scales off of defense only, so because of the fact that it gives so much crit rate and crit damage on a single item, more than any other item in the game, it provides more damage in general than any other weapon from all the tests that have been done. Another great option is the new Festering Desire weapon, which is an absolutely amazing option and has been given for free at Refinement 5 to every free-to-play player in the game. So even though the energy recharge is not always optimal since his energy cost is already very low, the effect will boost your skill damage significantly. Sadly, this does not boost anything but his skill damage, so does not boost his ult, but the higher base attack of the weapon does still help boost the rest of his damage. While these two weapons seem to be the highest performing in most tier crafting that we've seen, there's also plenty of other options that will work just as well, such as the Skyward Blade, the Black Sword, the Black Lift Sword, and Summit Shaper, amongst others. For artifact sets, I personally use Two Piece Petra and Two Piece Noblesse Oblige as it provides great damage buffs to his abilities and his ult. And they are sets that are used by so many other characters in the game that it is a lot easier to farm and to have some good piece already farmed, especially when using these defense percentage rolls that you never wanted before. Four piece Archaic Petra is also a very good option but you must be careful when using the elemental damage bonus effect as the wearer of the set, which is Albedo in this case, has to be the one to pick up the elemental crystal in order to provide the buff. Four Piece Noblesse Oblige is also amazing as it is one of the best support sets in the game and because the cooldown on his ult is so low, you will get very high uptime on the attack buff that it provides your party. You can also mix and match any of those sets as two pieces and you can also use Defender or Gambler for very good set bonuses, but sadly they do not have 5 star versions, so will fall off in the late game as you will be missing a few substat rolls and main stat rolls. As far as team comps and tips are concerned, the Geo element is looking at some buffs in the upcoming patch, which will make it more and more appealing of an element to add in a party. Geo Elemental Reactions can also react with any other element and proc a crystallized effect, which drops a crystal the color of the element on the floor, and by picking it up, your characters will get a shield that will protect you against damage. Also, crystallized reactions will not disturb any other elements, as it is a bonus reaction and thus does not mess up any of your combos. This is one of the reasons why Albedo can be used as a support to literally any character in the game and will fit in every party that you can think of, so if you enjoy his gameplay, put him in your party and don't ask any questions, you will do fine. Also, the elevator ability that Albedo can summon with his flower can be nice to hit Rune Guard's eyes with melee characters or to dodge some elemental effects on the ground, as well as enable some plunge attacks and reach some tricky areas in the world. Lastly, Casting his skill underneath very big creatures, such as the Riches Vine mobs, will make the flower disappear. So, in order to make sure that you do not waste your flower and your time, make sure that you are targeting it at some areas of the ground that are open, so that you do not make it disappear and not get the bonuses from it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this guide. Feel free to ask any question or share any tips you have about him. Let me know what you guys think of Albedo so far. There are still a few days left in this banner and I definitely recommend pulling for him at least for C0 and for the 4 stars for very high value and very fun playstyle. We have videos covering most of the Genshin Impact characters for complete builds and guides if you are interested on our YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe and go check it out if you are interested. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.